The prodigy has arrived. But the apple seems miles away from the tree. Meanwhile, the knives are out and still up in the dishwasher. So could history be about to repeat itself? I'm Alex. I'm Rob. And this is the Wolford Weekly Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to Wolford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC in the UK from Monday the 23rd to Friday the 27th. And he is here, he is queer, he's here to help us out, it's Rob. Hello Rob. (laughs) Hello Alexander, how are you today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Uh... Oh my goodness! I've got I've got twelve days off now. I forgot to mention this to you actually. Twelve <laughs> days off work now. Twelve, twelve part timer. <laughs> twelve all days. Seven, what are you gonna do? Booked as time off. Uh, oh, mate, sleep. I love it when that sleep. happens. Um, sleep for twelve um, days. I know. It's just it's worked out really nicely. Yeah, yeah, it's worked out really, really nicely. Ben wants us to go to, like, a flea market and buy shelves and a table for the lounge. There you go. That's going to be the highlight of my 12 days off. You can tell by the excitement in my voice. I can't wait. It's thrilled. A flea market. Now, remind me, I have never been to a flea market in my life. What exactly is a flea market? Like, what exactly... Like, do you mean, like, just one of those random little tat stall thing a bit like billy mitchell type type stall thing kind of like billy mitchell's tat store but um yeah. a little better i mean you can go to like whole streets where they have lots of secondhand shops um and you can kind of go in and they have like, oh, okay. i really like i really like the style of like 60s 70s type tables you know the tables which are kind of like a weird kind of pondy shape and then there's the legs kind of go oh, wide right, yeah. to really thin at the bottom yeah but I'll get vetoed. Too well, we're, so. we're just going to have normal. Yeah. <laughs> is that how your legs go? Is it? Are you are you a sixty? Yeah, child? exactly. How, I'm. I am literally a, Honestly, from the waist from the waist down, I am a sixties coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> With ring mark stains all over your face, eh? Yes. Can you tell? Like crop circles. <laughs> um, so uh, the other thing I want to know, Alex, is um, have you bought your mm. new car? After the after the drama and the horrific stunt, the big stunt of Alex Osborne of uh, twenty of twenty twenty one, you've you've got yourself a new car now. So what's it like? What is she like? Because yeah. all cars have to be she, don't they? All cars have to be she. It's not a single it's... male car in the entire world. Oh really? Oh I I mean I must say this car I got now I kind of refer to as her or she, but the car the van I had before I referred to as a male. And once I had a car that I referred to as an anime character. So, <laughs> take that as you did. will. Of course I... <laughs> you did. Uh, of course you did. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's frankly, Alex, I'm surprised that you don't have a gender fluid vehicle. <laughs> One day. One day. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyway, um, before we start this week's uh, <laughs> podcast, listeners, uh, we have me and Alexander here have a question for you. Now, we've had a few comments over the um, over the past few weeks about uh, the games that uh, we used to have in every single episode. And what used to happen is we used to alternate it and had to decide on a game uh, to throw at the other person. They were fun to do, um, but they sort of faded away in recent episodes. Now, our question to you is, it's, this is your podcast. This is what you choose to listen to. And, um, you know, the fact that it's a bit more awkward for Alex to edit, who cares? Your podcast, not his, it's fine. Uh, so, um, we would like to... It's not just awkward we for would me like to, to edit, um... it's also awkward for me to play, because I constantly lose, and then get the bullying yeah. on the comments below. <laughs> so... yeah. Oh, Which you makes want that? it okay. great fun So Rob wants more of that. Yeah, of course I want that. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Um, so our question to you, uh, guys, is dun, do you miss the dun, games? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun. You're getting such a slap when I meet you for the first time. That will be logged. Um, so yeah, our question to you, listeners, is: uh, Do you miss? <laughs> do you miss the games? Uh, do you want them back? Would you like them in another format? We're quite happy to do. Um, we're quite happy to get, uh, spring games back. Or would you prefer them in a, uh, a video of their own, a games night, as you were? So we could do like a whole video dedicated to the games. Uh, or aren't you that bothered? That's all right too. You know. So let us know in the comment section what you want us to do uh, about the games, um, and we will we will endeavour to follow your instructions to the letter. Yes. Also, 
also, if I may add, um, if anyone would be interested uh, in having another live games night, because I did four of them over quarantine when we were all in lockdown. And uh, I was, <laughs> Rob's reminded me, I was, I was kind of tinkering with the idea of maybe doing another live one, but I wanted to do it maybe to raise money for uh, Afghan aid charity, um, which is, uh, you know, quite an important charity to me at the moment and uh mm-hmm. i'd be interested if people would be up for doing that too um as a kind of a charity games night as well and uh we'll see if we can find a way of getting rob and me involved with doing that or something along those lines so yeah as rob said comment below um and or get in touch with us on our twitter uh or our email and um let us know what get if you write the games back and what games you'd like to see and in what format yeah as rob said anyway rob you're quite right we have had a very busy week of EastEnders this week and I think mm, we should we just? get the ball rolling with the slap that echoed through Wolford one of um I personally thought was a wonderful moment really brought reflections back to the old days of Pat and Peggy and Frank and, it was a you know, slap and a half oh mm. it was a slap and a half um there's obviously what? been a little bit of contro- uh, controversy on Twitter this week where people also felt like if it yeah. had been the other way round, if Keegan had slapped Tiff, would we all be kind of congratulating it in the kind of same way? Is that, uh, is you know, is, is it the equal uh, opportunities between them? I mean, for me, uh, so the story was that basically Keegan's got found out and both Dottie and Vinny are very, very upset about it. Uh, and Tiff was especially upset about it to the point where she basically slapped Keegan round the face and uh, Dottie's a bit upset because she feels like she's lost her friendship with Tiff now and something she never wanted to lose that's why she was keeping it secret um, and although Mitch has told Keegan to lay low for now he's still trying to endeavour to try to get forgiveness from Tiff as well so the story itself let's start off with I thought was tremendous and played out Mm, so well. really good um and tuesday's episode was an absolute joy to watch um after the concert the on Monday, uh, which we will be discussing <laughs> and your your thoughts <clears throat> about the ep- about that scene whether you think that, that it was okay to kind of show that on the tw- uh, in 2021 and where do you think the story is heading now yeah it's an interesting one i mean yeah i totally uh, uh yeah i totally agree um tuesday's episode was an absolute corker um uh it was really i loved tuesday's episode um the the way it was all found out as well you know um vinnie uh overhearing uh the conversation between dotty and keegan which dotty gave a very graphic description of what had actually happened so vinnie was under no apprehension <laughs> of what of what had actually gone on on the desk you ripped my clothes off you stuck your tongue down my throat i was like <laughs> all right does he stand us after dark i mean fan fiction territory god um and then he goes and gets drunk and meets tiffany on her way out of said concert <laughs> uh, and uh, and just spills the beans and tells Tiffany exactly what had happened uh, between Dottie and Keegan. And yes, as uh, we get, we get a fabulous slip from Tiff- from slap from Tiffany. I mean, it was a great slap. Some slaps on the, on the show, you, oh. you know, you think oh, that was clearly fake. That was clearly fake, but this was a corker, absolute corker. I don't, you know, I assume it wasn't, there wasn't a hand to hand, hand to face contact, but it was very well edited. It was one of those ones that you felt, wasn't it? One of those ones you think, Ooh, um, but interesting. It's an interesting conversation. It is an interesting topic. Um, what I would argue is that at the end of the day, these people are characters and they are supposed to represent, um, you know, other human beings. And that probably would happen in real life if a wife found out their husband was two-timing them. Some wives would slap their husbands. Simple as that. Obviously, you know, it's obviously, you know, if it had been the other way around, that would have been horrific because, of course, it would. Um, You know, yes, it is a conversation to have about the whole thought of domestic violence and, you know, all that sort of thing. However, I would also argue that it is pretty much a soap troop isn't it you know it's, it is it's a just, canon it may, for a soap, especially it, East Enders, it is a canon said. yeah you know and you know give it another five ten years maybe the landscape will change ever so slightly i have to be honest when i watched it i didn't my brain didn't go there it, it, i was expecting it to happen at some point oh, no. so no so you know no one's wrong when they point that out um but you know it's it's a soap at the end of the day and i think that that side of things hasn't changed that much on soaps um 
I think we've moved away from like you know the days where a wife would pull pull their husband by the ear and like drag them down the street and you know whack them with a rolling pin and all of that sort of thing. But um, or saucepan you know, like Pauline did with Arthur. Or saucepan, yeah, exactly. You know, um, so you know, I think give it a few more years and we might be we might be a, we might be having a slightly different conversation about it. But like I say, nobody's wrong in pointing that out. Um, but but yeah, I I mean I have to say I was more disappointed that we didn't get a proper cat fight between Tiff and Dot between Tiffany and Dotty. I, I was kind of looking forward to that yeah. because I was I, I thought that I thought that <laughs> Tiff was going to pull her hair out when they first, when they first came across each other again. But that didn't really happen. They had a much sort of calmer conversation where Tiff was just. I was a bit disappointed yeah. by the conversation between Diff because Tuesday's episode was was a ridiculously good episode. I was gripped by Tuesday's episode, especially wasn't it wasn't the only violence that happened on Tuesday because Keegan, being the caveman that he he you know tropi- he, oh. he's he's a, in a lot of ways he is Mitch's son, isn't he? Because he is just now and again an absolute caveman. <laughs> you know, walked into the walked into the um into the club, saw Vinny. And punched him because he'd wrecked his marriage. It's like, no, Keegan, you wrecked your marriage. Yes, it was a bit of a douchey move from Vinny, but at the at the end of the day, you were more of a douche in the situation than Vinny was. And Vinny, I thought, was absolutely within his rights to get up from being punched and give Keegan a ten times harder punch on the face and tell him exactly that. So mm. I was fully applauding Vinny on Tuesday. Um but yes, the conversation between Dottie and Tiff, I was disappointed by, I have to say, because I was expecting something a lot more... Well, I was expecting a cat fight, in all honesty. I'd, ho- I'd got myself prepped for a cat fight. I had popcorn ready to go, like shoveling it into my mouth. Go on, go on, rip her hair out. And it never happened, which was a shame. Um, maybe it might in future episodes. I think that Tiff was feeling quite raw when it, by the time it came to Thursday's episode. So she had no... Maybe she didn't have much fight left in her. We could argue that, perhaps. But yeah. where do you yeah. think the... Um, where do you think the... Or I mean, for a start, do you think that Tiff and Keegan can recover from this? And where do you see Tiff and Dottie going from here? What do you think is the next step of the story? I mean, this is what I was going to say. I felt really sad for Dottie, actually. I'm not that I sympathise with her because what she did was terrible. Um, but uh, she clearly was very upset that she had kind of ruined this friendship where she almost, she didn't want, it was a friendship she didn't really want Tiff to know that she had with her. Like, and she and she kind of said that Tiff's the only person on the square that kind of is, you know, taught, you know, being friendly to her and kind of conversing with her. Um, other than Vinny, which I thought was again a kind of like another swipe that basically Dottie saying that I have no interest in Vinny whatsoever. Um, I hope that Tiff and Keegan get back together again. I think it kind of, like you said just now, it's like father, like son. Mitch and Keegan are obviously following. Keegan seems to be following a very similar path to what Mitch is doing. And I worry that maybe if this should happen again um, or something along these lines should happen again, that Keegan's solution would be to bail. I thought it was quite admirable and a bit, a bit wrong for Mitch to say, like, you know, to, you know, take a step back, let her breathe. Because obviously that's what Mitch did. Uh, but he took a permanent step back and then disappeared and left Karen to look after his children and, you know, look after her life all by herself. Um, so I thought that, yeah. was, you know, that's quite a, a Mitch thing to say to Keegan. Um, do, do you agree? Well, I mean, I would argue that Mitch was not as, you know, Neanderthalish as, you know, we've, we've almost come to expect from him. Um, in this week because I felt that he did sort of I got the impression that he was trying to prevent Keegan from making the mistakes that he had because he did say to be honest you need to tell her you need to be honest with this this needs to be out in the open so you Mm. can deal with it because this is the sort of thing that kills marriages and destroys marriages and the longer this secret is kind of left to hang in the air the worse you're going to feel so man up you've done wrong go and face the consequences which to be fair wasn't a bad father-son moment you know he was trying to teach Keegan the error of his ways um unfortunately Keegan then went to see Dottie which is where the the whole confrontation between um uh you know because Vinny overheard everything that everything that he uh that they said um because Dottie was was kind of don't be stupid why on earth would you tell her that's your marriage over you idiot don't be ridiculous um but an interesting moment from Dottie was that she said that Tiff was one of the only people that she cared about, including Keegan, I noticed as well. I could, That's couldn't right. care less about Keegan. Could not care less about Keegan. But <laughs> Tiff um, Tiff was one of the only people that, sh- that she actually cared about, which I thought was quite a nice moment for Dottie to have. It sort of opens her up to uh, yeah. a bit of vulnerability, which we don't often see from Dottie. Um, so, 
I enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't praise Judah's episode enough. Um, I will say, I think, you know me, I'm a bit of a geek with the writers. Uh, and I will say, I think Lauren Clee, who wrote uh, Monday and Tuesday's episode, is one of the show's most underrated writers. Night- uh, she often pulls out absolute corker of episodes. So I'm a big fan of Lauren Clee. So well done if you're listening, Lauren. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I would like to see if... <laughs> I would like to see if uh, Keegan, and Do- Keegan and Tiff can survive this. Um, I wonder if Tiff I think will. They might. I wonder. I want. I think they. Mm, I don't know. I. Uh, the thing is, you know, it's. It, it was one of those moments where you know Keegan immediately can throw back the argument. Well, I was upset because of what you did, you know, and then, and then that game of tennis kind of happens. Yeah, of course. Um, so you know, maybe that's, Tiff will sort of back down. Way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, arguably, in a way because you'd... it's it's a bit like Tiff has taken some of the blame. Keegan is now taking some mm. of the blame. I mean, don't get me wrong; I'm not wiping away or erasing what Keegan has done. This he's not done. You know, mm. he's done something terrible. Um, it's not bad, but I, yes. I do think I think they can rebuild it. I think I think they can rebuild it. Um, and I noticed that Tiff and Keegan were both still wearing that uh, necklace that they both have, that jigsaw piece that they both have. Mm. that kind of uh, they share isn't it that that's uh, so i yeah. think that's a a sign a good sign that it should be it should be okay with them together i mean arguably um, tiff forgave evie for a lot talk. worse <laughs> Wait, so you know, well quite right exactly there there is that can we let's talk about monday's episode because monday's episode for me will forever go down in history as the <laughs> the Wolford factor the, the moment where the we got to see the concert of Whitney Dean and her beautiful voice. Uh, two songs, two full songs, uh, b- broadcast as as a part of the episode. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> you said that, you know, the writing on Monday was great. The writing, writing on Monday was great, but for like two pages, it was just sings a song. Singing. <laughs> Reaction yeah. shots. Sings a song. <laughs> I mean, you know, Whitney's a fan of the only Leona Lewis. Leona Lewis. than that. Well, actually, before we say anything about you know what we actually thought of the, of, of the storyline, both of us need to, to stand up frankly and applaud Shona McCarthy because whatever we might think of the story, she has oh, a, of course. she's got a she's got a got a set of pipes on her, isn't she? I had no idea she was quite that good. She, she I mean, it was a there was a bit, there was a kind of moment where you know she starts singing into the big mic and all of a sudden she sounds like she's in a recorded studio. But you know, it, it, <laughs> they wanted Whitney to sound as they wanted Whitney to sound as good as possible, and I, she did. You know, Twitter went mad for Shona's voice on, on Monday. You, you notice? Uh, are, are you accusing Shona for not singing live, Rob? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if she did sing <laughs> that live, or maybe she did. I don't know. Uh, but either way, she did sing. Everyone was kind of, <gasps> but and she and she was and she and she was quite amazing. I noticed as well. Leona Lewis even tweeted about uh, Monday's episode and said what an honour it was well, for a show she'd watched when she was a child to songs. have to feature one of her songs, two of her songs, <laughs> <laughs> two of her um, songs. Two of her songs. I mean, I didn't hate Monday, to be honest. I thought, you know, it was all right. It 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 it, it was nice. Um, and I don't know. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. You know, it was all right. I mean, I think it's this clue. The story's not over, unfortunately. But but you know, it's. It, I thought well, it was, no, because you've got the competition was, was next nice week enough. to win ten thousand pounds. <sighs> Can't wait for that. Is that is that the end of it next week? Or is, or is Whitney genuinely going way to be an international pop star in Japan? This is what I don't understand. What is the ultimate goal for this? It, what, because they can't just have... They can't just have Whitney kind of like singing and then she wins the competition and then that's the end of it. Because I don't... Because the whole point is that Rocky has been... Rocky's now her manager. And this week we saw quite a dark side of Rocky where he got a little bit aggressive because Whitney didn't want to perform anymore. So I'm guessing now that this story isn't about Whitney's music career at all. And it's about more Rocky. about us develop more development about Rocky. So, you know, it's Rocky's is fine. development is continuing, which is fine. Um, there's, there's obviously yeah. the Kathy thing as well, which kind of Sonia's kind of swimming around and kind of saying like, oh, Kathy, look what you've missed. And Kathy's <laughs> like, I didn't miss out. It's Rocky uh, or Terry. <gasps> Terry, I'm getting so shouted at from you, downstairs. You... Terry. <laughs> well we're not you said you were never Terry. gonna call you said you were never Terry. gonna call him that you said it first that's why you first said rocky i've I never had an issue with, with it i've never had an issue with calling you're him rocky. you're Rob. the one that 
Manipulation yeah, yeah, is the first step to psychopath. It's coercive completely. Yeah, yeah coercive. Man, complete psychopath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've never had an issue with calling him Rocky. <laughs> you were the one that was kicking off and being all sanctimonious when it first happened. I'm not calling him Rocky. Yeah. He hasn't earned that. He hasn't earned no. he hasn't earned the honour of a nickname for me. No. No, it's like well and now he's fallen into your heart and now you're calling him Rocky and now he's your mate and now he's not fallen into my heart so. it's, it's, and it's not about getting the honour there's no honour to the name Rocky I'd much rather he was called Terry I wish they'd keep the name Terry it's just anyway I'm getting shouted at as well by down, down downstairs by the voice inside my head so um, I better, I better... Yeah. Terry Terry had shown a side this week then so we've found that he can get quite aggressive quite quickly and also he uh, he was his eyes were quite wide as well this week when he saw the money getting all totaled up and counted behind the bar um, because obviously there's the story where after the bub the bub the pub had closed Linda had got the pub got broken into and attacked by two lads now do you think there's a link there do you think there is a link between Rocky and that those two lads because they're kind of I don't know if they're they're keeping to the story because they're able to find and arrest him. I don't know. What do you think then? Do you think that it's just a coincidence that kind of they're doing this rock, uh, this rocky, this Terry thing, or <laughs> is it linked together with the the break in of the Vic? Well, I mean, I didn't make that connection actually, but you could have a point there. Um, what I will say is, um, so obviously the, the Vic, well, there was an attempted robbery at the Vic, and we had a nice scene where I believe Kelly Bright's partner came and put his put his uh, hand over her mouth and, you know, acted all intimidating. Uh, so that was nice to see. Um, I will say, you know, when Jack came in and investigated the robbery, and I cannot believe that they had the gall, the absolute tenacity to say that the CCTV had caught the robbers after everything that's happened this past year. Cannot believe they had the nerve to bring up CCTV. I didn't believe it. Did not believe it. Of course the CCTV wasn't working. Why would it work in Walford? It never works in Walford. Um, but yeah, so that, so that's happening. I I didn't, yeah, but you could... Oh, sorry, I, I was going to say that um, also that um, it, although the CCTV worked for them to find the two... Uh, the two guys who'd broken into the Vic again this week, the CCTV failed to work um, on the story where they were trying to find Tommy. So it's like this, this CCTV system <laughs> offered, it's, it's terribly convenient, isn't it? It's terribly convenient for storylines. Sort it it's, out. it's like, it's like, the writers and the production crew actually control Wolford CCTV in some way. And they're able to switch mm. it off and on on a whim to add more drama a to a situation. But, um, yes, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, um, yes, so I didn't, I didn't make that connection. I do agree with you that there was something in Rocky's eyes when he, saw, especially when he saw the money passing hands um, with Whitney, because Whitney was like, eh, "You heard half of this," and she, he was like, "No, no, you keep it, you keep it," but like staring at the money like really intently. So something's going on with him. This might be slightly more complicated than the fact that he's just dying. There may, I, then I think there might mm. be something else going on with Rocky. I hope he's not going to turn into a really dark character because I really like I really like him. Um, I'd much rather he stayed as this sort of happy-go-lucky chappy, but happens to have a problem at the minute that we will and we will soon discover. Um, I don't want him to turn into some nutter that ends up keep, you know holding Kathy hostage in a warehouse and trying to get ransom money off the Beals and all of that kind of malarkey. I can't be asked with that. But we'll see. That's probably exactly what we're going to get. Shenanigans are going to ensue before in the next three weeks, I expect. But um, who knows? It's the fact that there's so many hints going toward different things, isn't it? Like the, the, so far, there's the, the perhaps the money situation with Terry. There's the death, the, the is he dying situation with Terry. It's the fact that they're kind of throwing all these ideas into the air and seeing which one gets caught next, you know? Mm. I mean, it, it could just be a case that they're just doing everything and anything with Terry and seeing what's yeah. going on with him. Um, because, the, you know, he had that story as well when he got introduced, when he was taking photographs of the house, but then he was doing that for a friend. Um, that's never really been explained or, yeah. you know, put through. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of stories kind of just hovering around him. And uh, it's difficult to know which one is the one that we should be interested in. Um, but then I yeah. suppose that's quite interesting that they're kind of turning Terry into this enigma. Um, I suppose, like you, I feel like I I worry that they're going to turn Terry into a kind of a darker character, and whether that's the aim. Yeah. Um, because we've been saying now for weeks on the podcast that you know it's nice that they've kind of got this happy 
compared to the character that we were led to believe Terry was, it's a much politer and kinder person he's, he is or has become. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting stuff. Um, do, what do you think about like the way that Mick is uh, forgiving Zach this week as well? Because Zach saved the day in his underpants. Yes. In his tighty blackies, and he uh, was yeah. kind of like seeing them out the door. Um, <laughs> I thought you'd like that scene, uh, but uh, there's kind of been it's like a, a truce made between Mick and Zach. Um, and do you think that's something that can be kept? Because Zach also said this week, which I felt really sad about, that he said to Sharon that he felt like he really feels like Nancy is the one, but he can't mm. keep this relationship going because they're already starting on a secret, which is so, He's it's so nice to see that as well from a character. Yeah. Well, yeah, but mm. like it, normally they kind of just still sweep it under the carpet and don't worry about it. It's just occasionally yeah. you see them kind of just sitting there looking all like, un- nervous and uncomfortable, but it's, I quite like that. They're kind of opening up the story that Zach is discussing yeah. it and talking about it and how he wants to keep Nancy, but he's worried what's going to happen if she ever finds out. So you know, what do you think? Do you think Mick's truce is a temporary one or is he being quite genuine and honest? Well, I think he's seen that. I think I think he is feeling genu- genuine contrition from Zach about the situation because um, he, he's forgiven Frankie for it. So, you know, it's only kind of fair that he for- forgives Zach for it, too. Um, and I think that he's seeing how happy that Nancy is. Um, and seeing as though Linda's also sort of quite delighted and, you know, got saved and he saved his wife from a potential assault and robbery. So he can't really, you know, he's not got that much of a leg to stand on, I don't think. Um, I think this is the thing. This is this is how it goes, though, isn't it? Now it's going to settle and Nancy's going to, you know, be utterly delighted. And then she's going to overhear some sort of conversation. And then it's all going to kick off, which Zach has literally predicted. It's almost as if, it's, it's almost as though he's got Christmas Day circled in his calendar. The day I will break up with Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> the day the secret will be revealed. Um, the day the turkey will be thrown across the room. Uh, I don't think it'll last till Christmas Day. Because I think it's probably <laughs> you want that to happen you, um, so girlfriend. bad. I want a turkey thrown, <laughs> damn it! Um, I, <laughs> I think it's, it is more dead like... Dead or alive, um, I don't care. <laughs> dead or alive. I, uh, throw a live turkey across the room. Why not? Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, this, this is a show... <laughs> Um, I, I, I do think that it's, it's a shame that ultimately this relationship probably is gonna, is gonna fall apart once the secret comes out because I do really like mm-hmm. Zach and Nancy together. They work mm-hmm. really, really Same. well. And I like Zach in the, uh, really sort of well. Carter, you know, in the sort of Carter, uh, environment as well. I think he really works in the Vic. I think I it's did. a nice job. Cause I, I didn't, I did enjoy the whole drama with the pies. That was fun. You know, there's, there's sort of Mick attempting to cook pies, doing it incredibly badly. He wouldn't have had that drama without Babe. It's only that for nothing. Mom, Babe would have had those pies running no. out of there. Perfectly cooked, you know. Bring our Babe back, I say. <laughs> um, I, I really quite enjoyed the fact that Zach was just hiding in the kitchen, just waiting for it all to go wrong. I'm just going to stand here until you burn those pies and then I'm going to leap to the rescue. I, I, I know I'm going to be needed here. Because, um, like, how long was he hiding there for? It's like he was just standing behind the kitchen door waiting to like, step forward and save the day mm. with the pies as if Nancy was kind of like, no, you wait there. Just give it 10 minutes. You'll be needed. Um, so, yeah, he came in and made these perfectly, like, edible pies. And it was great. Um, and he's now got his job back at the Vic as well, which, you know, like I say, I, re- I really like him there. Yes. Um, I'm intrigued by the... I like the fact that Sharon is sort of saying to Mick, you know what, get over it, all right? Like, clearly these two are madly in love with each other. We've, you know, we're all, we've all been young. We've all we've all run over somebody when we shouldn't have done. And to be fair, she's right. Most of the people in Warford have run over somebody when they shouldn't have done. You know, it's a, it's a walk into Warford sort of thing. It's like smashing a bottle of champagne over a car. If you haven't run over somebody, then it's not official. Um... So I, I am looking f- I, I, I like, I like Sharon's role in it as well. I do love Sharon and Zach's relationship. Zach is such a great signing. I know I think he's fit. That's relevant. And I know that every single piece of isomy clothing he wears, whether it be bottoms or top, is tight because he's either got a bulging muscle or a massive, massive package. Um, but you know, also I think he's a great character. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah. he's a great character and he's really working. Do you think? <laughs> Stop me before I say something completely inappropriate. <laughs> well, no, you're just it's just making me miss the days of co- uh, my Karat uh, conversations. To be honest with you, it's nice that you have someone to cling on he'll to. Be back. It's nice, you know. We both he'll now be back. have that. I wish I could. Yeah, cling he'll be. Oh, yeah, he'll be. Back. Wish I could cling on to him. <laughs> Claws. Um, <laughs> you. 
You said about Zack hiding. Like, I thought they kind of, not that, again, not that I'm telling writers what to do with their job, but I thought they kind of missed, because Zack seems to kind of be the Looks kind of strange. guy to, to me that would wear a lot of cologne, would like be quite a pleasant smelling guy. Like, you would smell mm, him before he entered a room. You know what I mean? And mm. I kind of, I kind of imagined yeah. that there should be a line there with me. <laughs> there should be a line there that, um, this is what you're right, we do. Uh, that, Ro- that we Mick, do. <laughs> that Rob, that Mick was, <laughs> that Mick is like in the kitchen and you kind of him going, What's that? So what is That's not Zach. Like that. And so he kind of worked out Zach was there. It's like Hugo Zach Boss. Zach, I Where Zach. is he? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, well, John Gautier would be more Zach's kind of cup mm. of tea. Oh, yeah, possibly. It's something expensive. Something expensive yeah. that you just literally bathe in before he goes oh, yeah. out at night. Yes. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> bathe in, in a paddling pool <laughs> outside of Sharon's room while Sharon just sits there with her eyes yeah. like that. <laughs> Sharon's more than used to the smell of that um, show going around yeah. her flats. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just sprays it for herself. It's like an air freshener for Sharon, isn't it? <laughs> she just, like, <laughs> just makes her happy. You know, like those, you know, like those dehumidifiers that put you in a good mood for the rest of the day. She just sprays cologne left, right, and centre, and then just inhales and like, right, ready to start my day, and then just struts out in her heels. Bless her. <laughs> Time to be Sharon again. Fabulous. Time to be uh, Shazza. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> like you, I love the story between Zach and Nancy, and it's a love story that yeah. I'm really attached to. So I think it'll be a huge mm. shame if they do break it off permanently. Um, again, I suppose a bit like Tiff and Keegan. I think they're 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 getting together again. A few weeks ago, we kind of I kind of brought up the conversation of like is is Kate Oates particularly very good at coupling people up? And I think you said well, it's John Sen who's kind of directing that kind of traffic. And I'm inclined to agree that because I think the coupling up on EastEnders at the moment has just been terrific. I'm really enjoying the kind of the pairing yeah. they've got together. Um, now and again, we have to give John Stan a compliment. Yes, I don't. I don't mind credit where credit's due. I always say that, and like, yeah, and we don't go absolutely uh, just to just to just to help the Twitter community along. We don't go into watching EastEnders <laughs> to find fault. We go into EastEnders no, to be don't. fans, enjoy the show, and then critique yes. and talk about it for a podcast yeah. that you're listening to right now. Yeah. Um, and next, Hi. we're going to talk about uh, the cat and Tommy story because Tommy's deleted his internet history. You know. Mother Parenting 101, if your child is deleting their internet history, they are up to something dodgy. Mm. It's like, it's one step next up from having a private window. And it's, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's something something bad is happening. All they need now is a VPN and you know that they're up to some something quite bad on the dark web. Um, we found out this week who Tommy is talking to, thanks to the Stitch Lexi, and she's quite right to say that her dad tells her that sti- stitches get st- st- stitches. <laughs> stitches get s- um, s- stitches get stitches, and is that not quite a? That's her father telling her that, telling this nine-year-old girl, "You're going to die if you grass anybody up." That's literally what Ben has been telling her. Someone will be, someone will break your legs if you do that. <laughs> it's like such a Ben thing to tell his daughter. Anyway, carry on. <clears throat> It's certainly a Ben thing. Um, Callum was there though on 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 site to kind of calm her down and buy her a burger and fries for her because we got to see PC Highway again this week. Oh, didn't we just? When he turned up, I was like, "Well, Tommy's missing for a month." Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he turned up, I thought he was going to go missing as well. We're like, you know, what's PC Highway's like? <laughs> you can't be. That's right exactly then. what he'd do. Um, Callum starts. Solomon starts an investigation into a missing child and goes missing himself. That's how good he would be at being a police. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I expected to happen. Exactly um, what. But he no, did. we got to see this week. <laughs> we got to see this week. Not only did we get to discover this week, I should say that Cat has a third business happening now in the laundrette, and that is delivering parcels right. like some kind of post office. What Honestly, is happening? Can we just dis- can we just discuss this for a second? So the weeks because we had a, I, th- I think it, it was either me, you, either you or Ben had this discussion with me on Twitter. We started the week with Kathy going in and so I've got, I've got a book delivered here, which for me seemed odd because she lives literally six foot across the road and Amazon delivers straight to your door. So I don't understand the point of that whatsoever. And then you started talking to me about Amazon lockers, which I didn't. I've never heard of an Amazon locker. What the hell is an Amazon locker? What does it do? Oh, yes, what is the yes. point in it? What is an Amazon locker? Oh, they're great, What's actually, I must say. 
Well, basically, if you well, if you're thought... not spending, uh, oh, to be fair though, I've made it my I've made it my thing now not to use Amazon that often anymore. But if I have to use Amazon uh, on principle, uh, <laughs> then and you don't spend more than twenty pounds, so you don't want to pay the two pound ninety five delivery charge. You there's loads. Of, honestly, if you have the Amazon app, it's loads of Amazon lockers in all kinds of. There's one near us in uh, Morrison's. There's one near us in Matalan, and basically they deliver it into the locker, and then you go to where the locker is. Uh, situated and then you're given a code you open the locker door and you can get your parcel and it's free because they're going to do a like, mass straight drop off in those lockers yeah, but, or you could just have it delivered straight to your door and if you're cheap like me and you don't really want to pay for Amazon Prime then a five minute walk down the road to, to go into a bright yellow locker and plus then you're also in a nice like, shopping environment you can think to yourself oh you know what I fancy a new cactus for the kitchen <laughs> you can just pop on a down to the cactus. homeware section and uh, have a look around <laughs> so you so that basically encourages other conglomerates to take your money, Alex. Though, doesn't it? So I'm surprised you're. I'm surprised you're. I'm surprised you're with that because that you. We both work in retail. We know how this sort of impulse buying works. Like that's rubbish. Like you can't. You can't like criticize one company and then automatically assume. Yeah, but I might buy stuff in Morrison's while I'm here. That's not how. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but in Kat's um, case Kat's case is only still a small business yes. so if you're going picking up your book in Kathy's case she might then think you know what else yeah. I need to do I need to get my my smalls washed and so she could take them with her so then Kat makes a little bit extra money so that's why they have Amazon but from the looks of things out back Kat didn't have any Amazon locker she just had a shelving unit that she produced <laughs> yeah we start off with Kathy going to pick this book up which I thought was odd but sort of had sort some sort of logic explained to me I was like alright fine but then we go into the back office and she's uh, they literally they've turned it into a post office Kat stood there like Mrs Goggins behind the behind the desk like saying well I'm afraid your pastor's going to be a few minutes Whitney um it's it just mad. They've turned it into this massive post with parcels everywhere, lined up against the wall. So there's a, it's a laundrette, a taxi office, and a parcel collection point. I, it, honest mm-hmm. to God. And I'm, also, God soon to be, else. if Finney's proposal goes forward, a mobile phone repair slash sales yes. shop. So are we going to that toward a, a fourth within industry the within, <laughs> within the laundrette? <laughs> I, I know. Honestly, I know. Dot, I, it, Dot would have an aneurysm if she'd seen what they'd done to that place. It was a rather, yeah. Because I, I don't understand what the point <laughs> of it was. It's just Karen sat there like, go on then, give Fill us your out. net profit. I don't I don't believe for a second that Karen knows the difference between net and gross profits. For a second. I think she I think she just heard those no. terms on Dragon's Den and decided to use them at Vinny, just for her own amusement while the smalls were washing in the washing machine. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. yeah, all of that happened. Anyway, I think uh, we're going basically, to yeah. <laughs> we've gone it's it's the tangents much anyway so yeah we meet scarlet this week now i have to say i'm really gutted that i bet that she's going to turn into a complete and utter carbon copy of janine because i could not have given i i could not have created the scarlet i wanted if i'd written it myself like she is, i had a conversation with somebody before janine um was announced as coming back months before all that happening me and a friend were discussing like oh i'd love janine to come back and scarlet would have to come back too because she's and i'd said that i would love it if scarlet was like you know safi from absolutely fabulous you know just an absolute like mm. kind of geek obsessed and you know and then had some that absolute insane woman as as a mother i'd love and it seems to be exactly what we've got however it's not going to be that simple, is it? It's not going to be that simple because it's there's going to she's going to turn out to be a complete. So I think what's going to happen is that we're going to have a sort of Do you think? when you know I think we are. I think we're going to have a sort of twist where Dotty. You remember when Dotty uh, first came in and she seemed to be this sweet uh, child, but there was something slightly unsettling about her, and then it turned out that she was working with Nick to try and kill off Dot for life insurance and all of that sort of stuff. I think we're going to have that sort of twist, and Scarlet's going to turn out to be like Damien with glasses. You know, it's I, <laughs> uh, because, which is a shame because it's a shame because I really, really, uh, utterly adore what we've got with Scarlet so far. This little geeky child who just wants to do yeah. her homework. I can't imagine, because we said last week, I think, that the really easy thing to do would be to make her just a carbon copy of Janine. So easy to do. But it's kind of like, where is the where is the drama in that? However, what we seem to have is there's quite a surprising revelation that Scarlett apparently has been through at least 10 foster homes. Now, again, there could be a reason for that, because she could be such a devil child that each foster home has gone, no, out, get out. No, we can't deal with you. Um... Mm. 
But there's... Because uh, when we left Scarlet... When we saw Scarlet last, um, she had been... She was in... Diane had custody over her. Jadine's sister. So yes. my question yeah. for a start is what happened to Diane? I swear to God, if they kill her off screen, that's exactly what they're the sort of thing they do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Scarlett's just no. gonna Scarlett's <laughs> just gonna say, "Oh yeah, she died. Ricky's dead as well. Sorry, yeah, car crash. Yeah, terrible." <laughs> and then they'll just move on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's like lots of family I... that they I feel should have yeah. stepped in with Scarlett before we got to the point where she was in foster homes. Because even Whitney said, "Well, yeah, I'm a I'm a godmother. I don't know, I don't know what she's been up to." You know, so <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the last thing I that know, Scarlett I agree needed, with you. A chance to have Whitney as a guardian for the past two years. Like, Christ, can you imagine <laughs> yeah, Whitney yeah, to look yeah, after yeah. a child as well as everything that she's been doing the past two don't, years? But, mm, well, yeah. yeah. And don't let Whitney give her driving lessons in the future. That'd be the worst Ever. thing to do. <laughs> I'm joking racer. about that as well. Um, yeah, no, I'm disappointed. Mm, fast and Furious. Yeah, they were. I'm disappointed from what you from you said uh, just said then is that why didn't they bring back Diane why didn't they bring back Ricky because it would it feels like to me that this is a real golden opportunity to bring back the butchers and build it would back, really build be up the butchers, fit quite yeah. nicely as well with whole, the whole yeah build up the butchers um, <laughs> we did it with the bills now we do it with the butchers uh, I'd we like yeah, I mean I love the actress who plays Diane I love uh, Ricky um, and I, I, I love the characters and I just think that was such a good opportunity I mean there's there's an argument there that if you were to bring in um, Diane and Ricky perhaps it would soften Janine that she perhaps might not get up to the the, the mischief that they're maybe planning to, for her to get up to because they're clearly going to get up to I they want Janine that, to bring her some trouble we said last week it's the ace card mm. they want to shake things up that's why they're bringing Janine oh, yeah. back in so perhaps if they brought in the whole family it might have softened her but then I thought I thought also that because there was that great dynamic between Janine and Pat where Pat would always kind mm. of be the conscious conscious the conscience on janine's shoulder and she would kind of all she would always try to guide janine down the right path but never quite getting through to janine enough and so even if it was just to bring one of them back if i suppose it would have to be ricky because ricky and janine you know from years ago from the 80s and 90s always had that bond that relationship when you know ricky wanted to run away janine wanted to go with her with him yeah. So maybe if they brought Ricky back, that would have been interesting. I mean, there's still talk Story's about Bianca yet. coming back as well. So maybe that's exactly that. This is only the beginning, the, the seed of this new story that's going to be mm. starting with uh, Scarlett and Janine. And I think from what the indication seems to be, the main story at the moment is how they're going to tell Tommy, if they do at all, the fact that Scarlett isn't his, his cousin, but is actually his sister, and that um, uh, Alfie isn't his dad. Um, it's Michael, isn't it? Michael Moon is his dad. Um, yes, Michael so Moon. I think that's the conflict to begin with between Janine, Kat, Tommy and Scarla. Uh, Scarla. And um, and I'm hopeful and I do believe in my, in, my, in my heart. But again, we've been quite wrong about some things, especially last week, but we can't talk about it because it's not happened yet. But obviously the the uh, <laughs> press release of what might be happening between two characters soon. Um, yeah. But I do in my heart feel like that with Scarlet, I think that the <laughs> best route wouldn't be for there to be a reveal of her to be, uh oh, she's a bit devilly. Let's, she's going to be in trouble. Mm. And I, I, like you say, like Safi from Abfab, I think that'd be much more fun to watch and much more interesting plot and story to take. Um, yeah. Cause but, I like the idea that Janine has just like, I can't be asked to be a mother. You know, not not that she can't be, because there were times when we saw Janine really protective over Scarlet. I get, I'm, I'm, I don't want them to lose that, but I would love Janine to have a child that she felt like, you know, cause the baby, yes, you know, that's when we last saw Scarlet, was when she was a kid and Janine was, you know, busy trying to stop herself being arrested for murder and trying to get herself, you know. So, you know, Janine was somewhat busy the last time we, that we saw Scarlet. But I kind of quite like the idea of Janine just finding it really difficult to identify with... Um, or to sort of relate to, or you know, be a mother, because um, we don't know where. Because Janine, let's be honest, could be anywhere, or could have gone anywhere. Because the last time we saw Janine, that she was trying to chat with a guy who just won the lottery at, at London Paddington or wherever she yeah. was. Um, so she could have gone literally anywhere, um, you know. So I, I, I do kind of want to see that that layer of Janine, and sort of like try and see her try and maybe identify with Scarlett a little bit more rather than them just going full on sort of like Janine standing there with like a camp smile on her face and being the evil thing and then Scarlett being there and doing a similar thing and you know so I bet there are there are a million ways that they could take this it's nice and open I have to say 
if there is something going on with Scarlett and Janine and they're in cahoots together over something, I'm struggling to think what it could be because I don't know what exactly yeah. Janine... Why would Janine... What What does Janine want if she is in cahoots with Scarlett about something? Like, what is... Because if she's still rich and she doesn't... She's not like she wants any money or anything. Um, so what... What 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 is her ultimate aim if she is trying to get some like Tommy or why would she be suddenly interested in getting into Tommy's life? So again, a million options of what they could do, and I just want her to come back. But you know, I'm up for. But then, of course, the other interesting <laughs> thing is is Cat said um, that she's met the foster parents, you know, because she took Scarlett back to these foster parents and said that mm. they were really nice. So unless mm. Janine has now reached the stage where she's hiring actors, you know, I I don't I she, you know that seemed genuine. That did seem genuine, didn't it? So, yeah. and surely if yeah. if if Scarlet had been dropped off, and I feel like Cat would have sensed a sense of terror if these, you know, if if these foster parents had decided, no, I can't deal with this child anymore. We're just going to drive, take her for a drive, and leave her by the side of the road somewhere. Um, you know, they, <laughs> she would have found something out. But she says that the foster parents are really nice, and that it's, it all seemed genuine. So I'm very confused as to where this is going. I'm excited to where it's going, but I I mm. couldn't predict it at all. So, hmm. I suppose time will tell. But um, for me, I just think mm. that Scarlet d- doesn't know where her mum is. And so she reached out to Tommy no. thinking that there might be some connection there and that they would maybe find Janine. So, um, but obviously no one knows where Janine is. So it's no. uh, it's not long. Not behind the bin. It's not going to be very long suggested. until Janine's back on the show. <laughs> No, I think so, <laughs> but then Whitney's Whitney's as we've discussed on numerous occasions. Whitney's judgment calls can sometimes be a little bit off. She's got a beautiful poor, voice, poor. but she's common she sense has. sometimes can be a little bit poor. Yeah. <laughs> her, her judge of ca- men yeah. and character can be a little poor. Yeah, uh, not right, not quickly, right. then we'll talk about Chelsea and Gray. Uh, Chelsea's oh, called yes. it off with Gray now, and Gray is now throwing threats toward Chelsea because Chelsea's pretty much said, "Leave me alone." We're now seeing this side of Grey where he doesn't like to be the one who's kind of pushed to the side and not wanted anymore. Yeah. Um, he compared Chelsea to being a bit of a whore when he spoke to his daughter this week saying, don't put too much makeup yeah. on. And then Chelsea, and she said, oh, Chelsea says you should always. And he was kind of like, Bleh. no. Bleh. But it's, 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 did... a, it's the fact that Grey, it's something Grey can't have. Grey, if Grey wants something, he keeps it, he has it, and he manipulates it and keeps it. And it's now happened with that Chelsea is strong enough to kind of move away from him. Um, so, sorry, yeah, so mm. we, what were we going to say? No, all I was going to say is, uh, with regards to that scene where Mia came in with the lipstick, uh, you know, considering that Grey is a, is a top lawyer... So presumably can afford to give his children, you know, anything that they want. I thought it was quite odd that Mia comes in with this, just one stick of lipstick. Can I play with this, please? As though she had absolutely no stimulation anywhere else in the house. <laughs> can I play with this, please? Um, I thought that was odd. Anyway, um, yeah. So, I mean, yes, Grey and, Sh- Grey and, um, Grey and Chelsea seem to be, uh, over, uh, this week because, um, I was a bit, can you explain to me how this ring ended up in the pawn shop? I'm sure they've mentioned it, and I'm sure there was a reason that it ended up in the pawn shop. I yeah. genuinely can't remember. He said that Chantel had been mugged, Chantel... and I can't remember if that's true or not. No, no. Chantel sold it so she was able to pay for a solicitor for the divorce. So that's, that's why right. It ended up yes, in the pawn yes, shop. yes. Uh, no, um, but that's remember. that. But when it was brought up, when uh, Jack mentioned it. Uh, Jack, this is another bit of Jack. Jack investigates this week, wasn't it? Like when uh, Linda said about just... how many weeks pregnant she was, Jack was like, like that. And, uh, and then obviously the, the ring comes up. Uh, Jack was a bit suspicious about how Gray's explanation for that was. It's like, oh, she was mugged. Oh, well, we can look, we can look at the CCTV and find out who mugged her, says Jack. Shut can we, Jack? Up. Shut because up. Shut conveniently, up. we can Guess again. <laughs> 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 This CCTV is a real pain in my ass, honestly. I just cannot, oh, cannot. They can't. They haven't got. I can't believe they've got the nerve to bring up CCTV. They cannot. I have. They have the audacity to bring up CCTV after what happened with Kush. No, I don't. Never accept CCTV in any form in EastEnders ever again. No, I don't care if you've got. If that's the only way out of the storyline, think of another way. You screwed yourself over with CCTV when you decided to murder somebody brutally in the London Underground. No, absolutely not. I'm not taking by it. grey. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Chelsea is in a lot of trouble, though. Chelsea <laughs> is in a lot of trouble now, um, in the sense that Gray seems to have unearthed some information about. Her. He was gonna. He was gonna message her on Instagram as well on his fake account, wasn't he? Saying women like you, oh, yes. and then quickly deleted it and decided yeah. to kind of get troll. rid of it. Um, uh, mm his trolling session and he's lost his job as well. So Mm. it feels like we're building up to, well, he's suspended, isn't he? He's been, he's been, he's been suspended. Yeah. 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 But what for exactly? Just for the way he was. I just think it's his conduct in general His conduct. Well, it's conduct in general, and also the his boss just doesn't like him, and I think she's just finding every, any little that, minute yeah. detail to kind of like pull him aside and take it. Um, and so it, everything's kind of unraveling for Gray again, like it was a bit, a bit like it was with Chantel when he found out that Chantel yes. was leaving. So everything's starting to fall apart for Gray again. So presumably we're getting to a tail end again with Gray's story. Is this going to be the ultimate? You know, is, is this the beginning of the end now for Gray's story? <sighs> I mean, I feel like they're going to leave Grey till Christmas. I feel like they're going to leave Grey till Christmas. They may as well now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we've dealt with it for long enough, so they may as well, they may as well drag it out a couple of more months until they can throw it, until they can blow him up on Christmas Day or something. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I can, I can cope with it. I, to be honest, I'm sure he's, he's got another victim in his, under his sleeve, up his sleeve, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure they've got another victim to, to kill <laughs> off before we eventually see the end of Grey. I'm sure some of the beloved resident is going to meet a grisly end. Um, because obviously we had, so murder is still on Grey's mind because there was that brief little moment when he was yelling at Chelsea and he proper lost it with Chelsea this week. She saw, um, Grey's true colours this week. So it's another person on the square that can kind of see Grey for the sort of person and he is um because there was a scene where he yelled at Chelsea and then sort of glanced down at the dishwasher and the knives are all sticking up so you know I'm frankly amazed we didn't see Chantel's ghostly apparitionist body just lying there um so well done for resisting <laughs> that um so he's yeah you're right he is slowly starting to unravel a little bit and he's becoming less careful as well I think he's you know he's He's, yes. he's losing it. And I think Chelsea insulted him this week as well. He, he, it's the first time that he's really had a woman stand up to him in the way that Chelsea, in the way that Chelsea did. Because she was kind of like, oh, right, quite a temper you've got there. See you later. And apparently shut the door on the relationship forever. And then he was, when they were in the vic together, and he was calling her cheap and saying, so that to me seems like the relationship is done. The only way that I can see that them sort of mm. kind of going back into it is if he literally bribes Chelsea, blackmails Chelsea into staying in the relationship with him, which to be honest is not beyond the realm of possibility. Yeah. No, no. I agree with you there. I think that he's, he's he wants he's getting himself into yet another relationship where he is coercive and got the control over mm. the female character. Um, Chelsea is much stronger. I feel it's unfair to say that Chelsea was stronger than Chantel, but I think Chantel was in it for a much longer period of time. She kind of felt worn away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I so so I think I think that. This is why I say I think it's the beginning of the end because I can't, I don't think they can do the whole yeah. thing yet again after the whole Chelsea and Grey thing should happen. Don't you? Um, <laughs> and, and like you say, I think. Well, I hope not because like it's getting such I a. I hope not. It's getting such a questionable response from people now, where people feel like they've been let down a little bit by what the Stenders has portrayed. Could they save it? As. Do you think? And I. That's interesting, and I was wondering the same question actually. Uh, I think if they do, they, I feel like they're deliberately going through a kind of uh, domestic violence relationship storyline with Chelsea and Gray. And I think if they go that direction, I think they can save it um, as so long as they don't make Gray kill anyone else in order to hide his secret. Because at the moment, it's just become a serial killer storyline. And I know, I know your face there is saying like, nah, that it's too much of a temptation for them to not that may have him maybe killing off I again. I do. I don't think he's done yet. I don't think he's done. Oh, I just think it's a shame. I just think it's a shame if they did it that way. I'd much rather they had a kind of uh, Mo and Trevor story where you're seeing this domestic violence unfold and it's interesting that you're seeing it from the beginning of a relationship as well you're seeing it from the start because obviously this is something that happens over years and years and years and years and years but um yeah but i don't think that it's going to go down a domestic violence front with chelsea because i feel like the point of this was for him was for her to say oh is that what you're like is it all right see you later 
Um, I think she saw him for what for sort of what he was this week. And like I said, I don't think she she because to be fair, she was she wasn't that interested in Gray in the first place, really, was she? Like she completely lost interest in him. Was literally yeah. using him for the holiday. The holiday, by the way, which I didn't realize was in Cornwall. I thought the, the way the photos were given to us, that he was taken into like like some exotic island somewhere. It was like, no, we're in Cornwall. Oh, right. Okay, fair enough. To any listeners from Cornwall, we'd just like to say that Cornwall is a beautiful part of the world. And uh, we, we, we can 100% endorse it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cornwall. I absolutely love Cornwall. I love it down there. It's a brilliant place. But I thought that the, oh, the, the way Chelsea's eyes cream, lit up, pasties. that she would... She was, yeah, oh, and the sunsets down Cornwall. But I thought that the way that Chelsea's eyes lit up when she saw the pictures of the holiday, that he was taking her to some sort of exotic island somewhere. So I was kind of surprised that <laughs> they literally, a, 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 not even that far, like a four hour drive down the road. Um, yeah, but anyway, I, I, I don't think that they're going to be in a, I don't think they're going to be in a relationship now. Literally, the only way I could see them hmm. is Grey blackmailing her to stay. But then I feel that. Chelsea will that's be spending all think, her time though. trying to. Mm. That's the only thing, the only way I think that they can do it in a mm. sort of relationship way. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, hmm. Wait and see. Can we quickly, very quickly, just talk? Because I really want to do. Uh, I don't want to gossip uh, because I want to talk about an article yes. that was released this week. Um, just quickly about Ruby, Martin, and Jean. Jean is coming back uh, oh, yes. very soon, presumably next week. Um, and she's messaged Ruby and warned her that she needs to tell Martin or else she's going to give. Uh, or tell Martin the secret that uh, Ruby mm-hmm. had put Stacey in prison. Martin's also noticed that the bank account has been completely emptied. The joint account. Ruby, why <laughs> Ruby didn't use her own personal account is still beyond my Yeah, head, from that cash fine. machine that only ever gets um, used when so, a character needs to discover they haven't got money. <laughs> yes, outside the station. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and Ruby's told Martin that she now knows that... She, that the amount of times uh, that Jean is that dying. cash machine has been accused of not working. The poor thing. It's like, I do work. Why does everybody always say I don't work? I work. I do my job as a cash machine. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> No, no, I'm just, I'm just wondering if we should like have a game called the Walford Cash Machine, a bit like Halfway's Hat that yeah, talks sure. to us, and you have to guess yeah, right. who's been using the cash machine this week. That's, there you go. <laughs> who's do you like that game idea? Week? Put it in the comments below. But yeah, <laughs> but yes. Um, so, what do you think? Really quickly, in a, in a minute, what do you think is going to happen then? Do you think Ruby's going to be outed by Jean, or will Ruby eventually tell Martin? Well, I uh, Martin's don't obviously think concerned that... about Jean's welfare now. Yeah, well, this, well, you know, you know that you knew that Ruby realised that oh crap, I'm in trouble here. When she was like, you know, you can't tell her that I've told you. You cannot tell her that because um, you know, Jean has literally no reason not to tell Martin absolutely everything now. Because the one thing that Ruby maybe had in her defence to stop Jean from from blabbing, she's now used before Jean even got back. So mm. I. I but then, again, I mean, we're back to the whole conversation of whether Jean actually has cancer or not, aren't we? Because Ruby was now saying, and it's terminal, you know, and telling Martin that Jean was going to die within in the next few months. Um, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, I'm more interested. I'm interested to see what happens when Jean gets back. Because um, she was texting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jean was being a right troll this week. Like, ringing Lily and saying, make sure you tell Ruby, I'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing her. <laughs> <laughs> and then texting Ruby, going, "We told him, yeah, I'm coming home soon." <laughs> so, um, yeah, know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when uh, Jean, naughty girl. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when Jean gets back. But I just want this cancer storyline resolved one way or the other. It's the only thing I can really say mm. to it. Um, and as for Ruby, uh, I, I, who knows? Who knows? It's not going to end well for Ruby anyway, because Ruby's now, because of the the fact that the endometriosis thing has passed now. We're now into Ruby and Martin at it like rabbits all the time again. Because she's like, I'm ovulating. Let's go to bed. Um, so <laughs> so presumably Ruby is going to get pregnant soon, <laughs> is my guess, and then it's all going to go wrong from there. Okay, wonderful, good. Right, so that was the roundup of the week of EastEnders. Um, and as I say, we got a, a bit of an. Uh, we're going to talk about an article now on I Ain't Want to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't want to gossip. So uh, this week I was the Edinburgh Fringe, and at the same time as the Edinburgh Fringe, there is the Edinburgh Television Festival. Now I think I think it's the same thing. I'm not sure. I'm not clued up on media and the arts and stuff like that. I wish I was, and I could have gone to it as well because it's just down the road. It's 30 minutes down oh, the road. Yeah. I completely didn't know I really it was want to go. I'm really quite miffed, actually, because I want to... So do I. Next next year, Rob. I really want to go. We're next, we're next year, we'll go. We'll go next year. 
yeah, pin down a producer. Yeah. However, something interview. quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find the big producers of EastEnders and tell them this is what we want yes. to happen. Uh, so, uh, no, <laughs> so, something interesting happened actually <laughs> on uh, during the end of a TV festival, um, and it it surprised me that it was said um, at, at the time because obviously there was the box sets during the Euros and during the Olympics. ITV did it for a short period of time. BBC did it for a little bit longer. The BBC were the first to announce they were going to do the box sets for EastEnders. Um, so releasing them all on Monday, but still broadcasting them on TV throughout the week. ITV uh, boss Kevin Ligo had hinted that they were planning to do a shake-up of the broadcasting of Coronation Street and Emmerdale, um, kind of hinting that they may go back to releasing the episodes on ITV Hob again on a Monday, but still broadcasting them uh, as they would normally on the main channel at the same time, saying that actually they found that it was much more commercially viable for them and that for money wise it, they were making a bit more money i presume it's because on itv hub if you're not it's, well, if you record college street you can skip the adverts but on itv hub you mm. can't skip the adverts you have to watch them so it works or out a little ITV bit better hub for premium. itv in the long run yeah or unless yes unless you buy itv hub premium but then itv still make money through the subscription yeah um, exactly yeah. now a couple of things i got out of this is that it's shocking that ITV are the ones that are saying that they want to do this and that this is something they want to go forward and maybe venture and not the BBC first. And what does this mean? Not for ITV, but what does this mean if ITV do the go soaps. forward for EastEnders? Does this mean that they're all soaps in general? Does this mean that we're now in a ecosystem of soaps where we are just going to get them out on a Monday. A lot of people have said that you know, the Duff Duff's lost their strength by doing it. I must say it, mm. it is quite nice to have that kind of cliffhanger at the end of the episode. But also, does that mean that EastEnders could potentially move channels? Does that mean it could move to BBC Three and then skew the kind of the audience again to a much younger audience still in that way if they release it on iPlayer because normally programs that get released as a box set on iPlayer unless it's very special exception it's on BBC Three and so it's on a box set through BBC Three before it gets on to the, uh, onto any channel uh, a main channel one, two or three, four so anyway I'm bad I've gone on too much what do you think Rob? What, what, do you think this is just a kind of passing comment nothing to get yourself worried about I mean, or are you excited about the idea of this mean, happening well I wouldn't say I'm excited I mean I think that the key point there is the fact that ITV have said it's re it's paid dividends for us doing it because of adverts, which the BBC obviously doesn't have. Um, but then on the other side of things, the BBC has come out and said that uh, this year has been the strongest East End has has ever had on iPlayer. Um, so I I do believe they're sort of pushing that forward as a, as a statistic. Um, you know, and saying, oh, look, look at the interest that people have in watching these tenders online. Like, that's a thing. Yes, people love that. Um, so I think, mean, yeah, give it a few years. And I think the thing is, I think the problem is the soap genre as a whole is sort of made of really, really fragile glass at the moment. You know, they've really got it. Like, even if I, the ITV soaps are ahead of EastEnders, which they are and have been for a little while, the other side of things is, you know, they are in a lull themselves, you know. Corey is still is posting the odd rating where they they posted like three in the threes in the three millions rather than you know the fives and you know where they have been. Um, so none of the soaps are in you know what you would argue is completely and utterly invincible territory at the moment. Um, so is the risk of doing something like that on a permanent basis putting the bullets in one of their heads? Who knows. Um, I do mm. think that sticking BBC, sticking EastEnders permanently on iPlayer, while it works for us, we've made no secret about the fact that it was great for us to like watch them all on a Monday, record on a Tuesday afternoon, and then <laughs> and then Alex has the entire week to edit the episodes. Great. Um, and if the BBC is doing that for our benefit, thank you then very much games. indeed. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'd have games all night long. Um, I, but yeah, I uh, I do wonder if EastEnders could survive that. In all honesty, I think EastEnders is a bit fragile at the moment to be really doing something as dramatic uh, as that. But I mean, we'll see. I mean, I think I can Im I can totally imagine that it was great for ITV to have like more money on the adverts and people deciding no, screw the adverts, I'll buy ITV Premium. So I, I imagine it did pay very well for them. Um, which, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, they're a commercial channel, so why wouldn't they? do the thing that's going to earn them the most money. That's the whole point of them being a commercial business, right? Um, 
But yeah, the BBC yeah. has got its own agenda and its own things to do. So who knows? I think it would be a mistake at this point. I, I stabilise the show a little bit more first before we start just kind of rocking the foundations of it in that way. But unfortunately, I'm not in charge of the BBC or its scheduling. If I were, then that would be a different story. But unfortunately, I'm not. So I. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would. One thing I would say is that I agree that I think that BBC needs uh, EastEnders needs to kind of find its footing again. It needs to find its 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 foundations and then build back up again because regardless of like there being the odd one or two good episodes it's still it's still kind of struggling along and kind of like you, you kind of there's a lot of people who kind of see it as a kind of wounded animal that even needs to be helped and cured and brought back up again to strength or just put out of its misery Euthanized. it's at that yeah. kind of limbo situation <laughs> and um i think if, if they were to put it on a box set it's 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 almost the death nail for the show. Um, uh, like you say, it was easier for us to, but to, but to, 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 to basically change the schedule for of EastEnders just for two people so they can make a podcast every week. It's a ridiculous <laughs> uh, way to control a channel and a TV station. So I think I think if but you thanks. do do that, can you imagine in the boardroom they say, "Well, actually." Actually, Rob and Alex of Wolford Weekly would prefer it if we had it as a box set. Well, let's put it on iPlayer then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's stick it on iPlayer just for them. And we'll tell them everybody that it was beneficial for us. <laughs> you listen to BBC. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do think that they need to find... Although, have you noticed also recently they've been doing billboard adverts resenders? Have you seen the billboard Yeah, I've done that for years. I have not seen... done that for years. I know, they're mad and and they at the bottom it says eastenders of wolford i thought that was a lovely little touch yeah. that they put on there and nice. they've got all, all the cast nice. kind of like stood there's one outside the calf there's one in the laundrette i think there's one in mm. the vic and they're all kind of just going well that's the arches you know kind of like yeah. having a good time together they're great i like them mm. and so um, I, I mean the thing is they so are pushing clearly, this janine return hugely aren't they like the trailer the trailer that we spoke about yes. last week is literally i think being aired before and after every single episode of EastEnders at the moment, um, so <laughs> you know, they, no one could accuse the BBC of not trying to uh, kind of entice viewers back. No. Um, and, like, and like we've said, Janine is their ace card, so I really, fingers crossed, it works out for them because it need it, it needs a boost at the minute. It needs a bit of a shot in the arm to show at the minute. So um, yeah. let's hope that it works, and let's hope all this mad advertising works because. It's a good show. We love it. We love it lots. And we want it to continue for many, many, many more years to come. Whether they stick it on iPlayer or, you know, send it out through Braille. You know, anyone. I, I, you know, we just want the show to survive. So we most certainly do. Uh, but do let us know what you think of um, these potential changes in the show's format and what it might mean for EastEnders and the soap genre as a whole. You can uh, contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. And you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify or any of your favourite podcast sites. You can email us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. Com. Uh, we will be back next week uh, same time same place different shirts <laughs> uh, and until then it's goodbye from me <laughs> and it's goodbye from me see you next week bye bye